Namaste, and welcome to the 36th episode <laughs> of Ula Du Narpadu. So uh, today, and the next few verses, we're going to wrap this up. And Bhagwan is making some really salient points that apply to almost everybody in the Advaita scene. Huh? Let's read the verse. If in delusion we think that we are the body, then thinking, no, we are not this body, we are that, the reality, will be a good aid for reminding and encouraging us to abide as that. However, since in truth we ever abide as that, why think always, I am that? Does one always think, I am a man? That is, to be a man, does a man always need to meditate? I am a man, I am a man. <laughs> I am what I am. <laughs> and what I am is a man. <laughs> but I am also that. Now, how does that vibe or how does that mood square with the typical practice or the, the typical understanding of people who are into spiritual life or Advaita? Well, unfortunately, most of them are on the mental platform. And so they think that simply repeating, I am that, I am that, uh, is the same as being that. But they don't get it. And the reason they don't get it is that, again, they are mistaking the symbols for the reality. I remember one time I was at a national rainbow gathering in the U.S., way up in the mountains in Colorado, and oh, by the way, if you've never been to one of these, you really should check it out. It's major fun. But uh, one night there was a big drum circle and everybody started chanting, we are all one with the infinite sun forever and ever and ever. <laughs> and I was going, hmm. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> as soon as you say, I am that, it means you're not that. It means there's a difference between you and that. Try to understand. In real oneness, if there is even the perception of who I am or what I am, it is just a feeling. It's not something that you could verbalize. It's not something that you could make into a slogan or into a mantra. It's not something that you want to sing in a fireside chant. See, that's why seven years ago, I made the determination that I'm not going to go anymore on faith. I'm not going to base my beliefs or my practices or my understanding on what somebody said, some authority. Instead, I'm going to look inside myself and be ruthlessly honest and see what am I experiencing? What is my actual perception? Not just a thought, not something I read in a book, not something that some authority said, because that will just lead you astray. If you look at these religious groups, if you look at these spiritual societies, uh, they always have a leader, a role model, a guru, somebody who says what to think, uh, what to feel, what to do. And the legitimacy of the, of the followers is derived from the authority of the founder. Not from their own experience, but by how closely they follow the rules. Now, there's a thing about rule followers. They never do anything original. 
they always just follow in the footsteps of those who have gone before. There's a certain value to that. Absolutely. But there comes a point where one has to go off on one's own and discover the truth for oneself. Otherwise, he never arrives. He never makes it. In the past, I was always in trouble <laughs> in these different religious groups because I already had the tendency <laughs> to go off and discover things on my own. Although for, again, for legitimacy, for the sake of credibility and membership in the organization, I would have to follow the leader, you know, at least to some degree, right? <laughs> But toward the end, you know, it got really outrageous because we were dealing with Raga Nuga Bhakti, spontaneous love. Now, spontaneous and rules never meet. If you're following authority, you're not going to do anything spontaneous. How can you? But their idea of spontaneous was to apply rules even to your emotional life which is ridiculous. So, of course, I got into conflict with these guys. And I was doing some really good, if I, if I say so myself, I was doing some really good creative work. But could I get credit for it? Could I get recognition for it? No. Why? Because I wasn't following the rules. I had experimented with things that were outside the purview of their philosophical rules, uh, especially Tantra. I experimented with Tantra and I had quite a reputation because of that. Big deal. I did, I did some workshops for two or three years and then I dropped it. Why? Because if you go into Tantra, if you go into sexuality all the way to the end, what you will find is love of God. See, so the real breakthroughs, the real innovations, the real creative work in any field, but especially in spirituality, is only going to come from those who break the rules. I mean, okay, now we're following Ramana or we're in the sphere or the circle of Ramana. So let's look at Ramana. For his example, he never followed any sadhana. He never read any books. He never went to any teacher. But he got enlightenment experientially at the age of 16 by intuition, by following his own awareness. So how is this? Huh? How is it? Well, I maintain that anybody could do this. Not everybody does because they are stopped by this conditioning of following the rules, of being like everybody else, following the leader and so on. But everybody could, theoretically. Now, what does it have to do with this verse? Well, People on the mental platform, people who are following rules, people who are just chanting verbal formula to themselves, I am that, I am that, I am that. They never get self-realization. Why? Because to get self-realization, one has to actually be that. Now, of course, we're all always ever that. <laughs> but as soon as we say, I am that, then we're not. Because the statement, I am that, contains the assumption that I am not that. I am different from that. You see? It's paradoxical. It's an oxymoron to say, I am that. No, I am I. I am always I. 
I am never anything but I. I am. I, I. So how does one attain this realization? Not by following rules. Not by listening to authority. Not by doing whatever everybody else is doing but by making a radical decision that I am that. <laughs> it's simply an assumption, just like I am not that is an assumption. See, it's a background decision that we make, and then everything else that we do and say comes off of that. Well, I am not that, so I am not enlightened. So I have to do some sadhana, so that means I can never attain it. And people like that don't attain. The people who attain are the rule breakers, the creative ones, the experimentalists, the experientialists, the people who dare to go beyond what they've been told. Huh? It's just like leadership. Do you think anybody is going to come up to you and ask you to be a leader? No, it doesn't work that way. And if it does, then you're not really a leader. You're just a big follower. <laughs> so actual leadership, actual authority is never given. It's always taken. So that's the way the world works, people. Real self-realization is never given. The guru is never going to give you something that you already have. The real guru is going to take away from you what you are not. So by negative logic, by negative statements, you are not this, you're not that, you're not this other thing, you're not these five koshas, Huh? You're not this mind, you're not this ego, so on, so on, until there's nothing left. All you can be is you. <laughs> All you can be is the self. So it is an act of bravery, an act of courage, an act of rebellion against all rules, against all authority, against following and against imitation to take enlightenment, to take self-realization. Say, I am that. I am. I, I. That's the only way that anybody is going to make it. So, in other words, we're not always sitting here thinking, I am this, I am that. Well, maybe some very narcissistic people are. Uh, there was a, uh, someone was doing research on L. Ron Hubbard and found out that in his early uh, works, before he, before he stole and plagiarized Scientology, he had uh, used affirmations. And so he was going around all day saying to himself, I am great, I am intelligent, I am powerful. People want to do what I tell them to just because of my presence and so on and so on and so on. So <laughs> this guy who is notoriously insecure and fanatical, uh, well, let's call him a misleader, not a leader, but a misleader, because he was giving people things, he was putting things out that he claimed to be original, but were actually originated by others. So, see, actually, he's a follower. He's not a leader. Okay? I admit to being a follower of Ramana, but I'm also original. I also dare to create my own reality. Huh? And I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to talk about what it is because it's none of your business. <laughs> but the devotee, one who actually loves God, will always be original, 
will always be outside the box, will always be unique and inventive and creative and not simply a follower. Om Tat Sat. Om Harihi Om.